So a little more detail on spinal nerves themselves, which you already know some about. Spinal nerves arise from the spinal cord and carry motor and sensory information. So they're either carrying information that way or that way. Let's look at them more in detail. Spinal nerves um, are made up of some of the same layers you've seen before. So so you could guess what layer is the outer layer that surrounds an entire, entire spinal nerve. What's something you could guess? Do you remember this word? Epi. Epi means above or around. So spinal nerves are groups of axons. So we're gonna have groupings of them and different names to make all this up. So the outer layer here is epineurium. Neurium refers to um, nerve, so opposed to epimyceum or epi, um, etc. So the epineurium is the connective tissue that surrounds an entire spinal nerve. This right here. Then we've also got perineurium. Perineurium, peri means around. That is this right here, the perineuron is going to sur surround these separate fascicles. Just like in muscles, we've got these separate bundles that are surrounded by connective tissue, these connective tissue layers that are called fascicles. So here is a fascicle as well. These fascicles are composed of many myelinated axons that are then surrounded in this um, that's where the arteries and veins that supply blood supply to the, the neuron would be. So the smallest unit here is then going to be the endoneurium. And this is going to surround each axon. So here is our endoneurium. Here is our endoneurium. Let's do it here. Here is our endoneurium. Inside is what endo refers to. So both the layers of the connective tissue layers of a spinal nerve. Biggest thing to remember is that a spinal nerve, a nerve in general, is a bundle, a group of axons. And then this cross section of the nerve here is where we see these connective tissue layers and related to the muscle because the layers, the names are similar. Um, the last thing I wanna show on this image, so this right here is coming from right here where we've got both motor information and sensory. If we were to divide this up, continue this on, this sensory information would go this way to where the posterior or dorsal horn and the motor information is coming from this ventral or anterior horn and traveling out this way. I wanted to remind you what's in here. What is this? These are our unipolar cells that make up the ganglion. That dorsal root ganglion is what this is that is filled with the cell bodies of sensory neurons. So don't forget that and, and relate this all together, right? That's what this last slide is gonna ask you to do. So here is a learning check. I'd like you to be able to label everything listed here. So you could print this for yourself, do it by eye right now. Um, I'll bring this up now so you have the answers. So you've got um, the three different meninges over here dura, arachnoid, pia mater, the ventral root, and the dorsal root. It's fine to call those anterior and posterior. Dorsal root ganglion with the spinal nerve is where those two, the sensory and motor components have met, come together. White matter, gray matter, you should also be able to label the different horns here. Um, the, the dorsal horn and the ventral horn. Central canal 
is one I don't believe I said in the previous video, but it's this um, canal right in the middle here where cerebrospinal fluid is going to be located. So that's your learning check. And this is what we did just in this last video. Um, describe the typical nerve, including the connective tissue wrappings.